and welcome to Finextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Folk Rica of SAP and we're at Cybos 2016 in Geneva. Thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Emily. How far has blockchain moved into the mainstream since Cybos in Singapore last year? And what do some of the early blockchain successes show us about how banks should approach the technology? Regardless what you think about blockchain, I think the last 12 months have been pretty amazing. Yeah, we have seen a record number of companies focusing on blockchain technology. We have seen a record number in investment on blockchain firms. We have seen almost every bank doing some sort of blockchain activity. So I think activities are going on everywhere and everyone is clear that the technology is too important to ignore. Now the question, you know, what does success mean or how do you approach that? Um, from our experience, uh, the best approach is to partner. So let me give you an example. Uh, we have a customer in Western Canada called ATB Financial, a regional bank focusing on Alberta, food service bank, doing business banking and uh, retail banking. Um, Well-known SAP customer have done a significant replatforming of their operations to SAP over the past years and they wanted to innovate around their core. So they contacted a couple of uh, fintechs and together with one fintech called Ripple we sat together, ATB, SAP and Ripple and we talked about how we can streamline cross-border payments. So we, we did a hackathon, two days and made our mind up, you know, what could be a good process uh, uh, to improve the time for processing cross-border payments from Canada to Germany. So it uh, took us in total 10 days to set a complete landscape up in the cloud, doing additional mobile web application, connect to the Ripple network, and then send a transaction live from Canada to Germany. So what we were able to achieve in that uh, proof of concept was that normally it takes the banks around three days, could be two, could be six, but on average three days, uh, to send this transaction through multiple intermediaries. We were able to process this transaction in 20 seconds. And this is not just you know, a benefit of cost and time, this is first of all a benefit regarding customer experience. Is it clear now what the benefits of blockchain are in financial services and the areas in which the technology can be most usefully applied? I believe yes. Uh, when, you, when you look at the massive cost savings that are expected and some studies uh, um, go as high as 15 to 20 billion a year by the year 2022, uh, then I think the industry that is pressured on margin anyway is looking for ways how they can take out costs, how they can streamline processes. Now key to all that is process simplification. Yeah? Um, you, you, you try to create a network with multiple parties uh, that can do point-to-point -point transactions and taking out the intermediary. And the areas where this applies, you know, various areas. There is, it's not just payments, as I mentioned in the example earlier. You could think about syndicated loans. You can think about trade finance. You can think about uh, everything around treasury, bond trading, uh, OTC derivatives, uh, equities. Um, you can think about KYC, so topics around compliance. And lastly, it, it can be insurance as well. Think about insurance contracts. So there is a wide range of areas where you can apply to technology. And I think uh, the benefits are pretty clear after the POCs and uh, uh, everything in terms of research that has been done over the past 12 to 18 months. What do you think will be the key elements for the blockchain story for 2017 and beyond? And in particular, do you see a stronger role for collaboration? I certainly see stronger collaboration. Um, and I think that's refreshing to see that the financial service industry is getting together they are looking for collaboration on the topic of blockchain. They are identifying topics like KYC, like uh, trade finance, where they want to use similarities to optimize the value chain. And when I say 
stronger collaboration, it's not only between the banks, it's between the banks and their vendors as well. So actually, what we have seen in other industry as part of the digital revolution over the past decades, we are now starting to see in banking as well. The value chain is breaking up. Banks will more and more include other vendors as part of their value chain. And in a nutshell, that's the beginning of the industrialization of banking. That's great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for watching.